Hey guys, so for this video we decided that we should do our birth story. I know we did a vlog of our birth, but for just for us to remember specific details, we decided that we should make a video of everything that happened leading up to the birth of this little girl. So I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so I'll start with the weeks leading up to the birth. Um, I would say about two, oh God. <laughs> You can feel it. <laughs> my hand is right on her butt. And she just let out the I biggest poop. I have a feeling. Oh my gosh, it's like vibrations. So anyway, in the two weeks leading up to the birth, I was experiencing all kinds of sickness and I wasn't feeling well. So at my 39 week appointment, I told my doctor and the nurse that I wasn't feeling well and I was experiencing all that stuff. And they decided that they wanted me to do a preeclampsia screening test, which is horrible. Anyone who, who has had to do this and pee in a jug for 24 hours knows it was just miserable. I was going to bring that into the lab when I decided, you know, I might as well just call the doctor and see, you know, because I was seeing a lot of like stars and lights and stuff. It was just really weird and I was worried. So they sent me into the hospital at the outpatient center just to get checked and monitored because at this point it was two days before she was due. So they just wanted to check and make sure everything was okay and there was no stress on the baby. So I went in there, she put all the little straps on me and it did some blood work and all that stuff and um, everything was perfectly fine. So they discharged me, I left, and everything was good. <laughs> Somebody's pooping. After that happened, I turned in my urine and then my 40 week appointment was on that Thursday, September 10th. So I went into my appointment, actually. Which is her due date. Which was her due date. But that morning, actually 7.32 in the morning was my first contraction. So I went to my doctor's appointment at 9.15 that morning and my results for preeclampsia tests had not come back yet. So they told me that they would, you know, keep me posted, let me know. They said it would probably come back later that day or possibly the following morning. So that was just kind of up in the air at that point, but everything looked good. I was two centimeters dilated at that point um, when they checked me. And so they just said, all right, well, if nothing has happened by next week on the 17th, then we'll induce you. They also, well, they also told her that they don't think that she would make it to the 17th. Yeah. It looked like she was. She was definitely low and I told them that I did have two contractions that morning and they were saying, well, that sounds like signs of early labor. And I had all the signs of early labor. I mean, everything that you, that they say is signs of early labor, I had going on. So um, they were saying if I did make it until the 17th, that's when I would be induced, but it didn't look like I was going to. So when I came home, I had, um, I would say like another one or two contractions and then around, what time was it? 11.20, I got my first contraction. And then at that point, I started recording all of them. So these are all my contractions from that morning and that afternoon. Um, maybe we should feed her. <laughs> okay, we're gonna feed the baby because she's upset. Let's feed the baby. Stay tuned. Okay, we're back. As you know, Shadow's writing all these down. I know there's apps and stuff for this, but at the time, I just wasn't thinking about it. I was just thinking, Okay, record them because I know as soon as they're five minutes apart for one minute each is when you're supposed to call the doctor and go to the hospital. So I was recording all of them until I got to that point. And that started at about 11.20 was my first one that I recorded. So at about 2, 2.30 is when she said, okay, I think you should come home from work now. Yeah, I waited until they were like, they were like five minutes apart when I called Anthony and I was like, all right, come home from work. And I called the doctor too and she's like, okay, we're gonna call you in. So they called me into the hospital. Anthony was home ASAP and we went. We were 40 weeks at that point. That was the due date. Yep, right on the due date. Thursday to the 10th, that was right on the due date. So we had already, the car seat was in the car, bags were packed, we were ready to go. And if you haven't seen the birth vlog yet, you should probably pause this, go watch it. Yep. It'll be in the description down below. Yep, it pretty much starts off when we're going to the hospital. But when we got there, um, we got in right away, everything was good. I didn't want to be the one to say I was in labor, I was in labor, and then go to the hospital, and then they sent me home. 
So for that reason, we were holding off on calling all of our family and letting everyone know just to get to the hospital and see if it, if it was real labor. So when I did get there, she told me I was dilated to a three, or it was like a three and a half, four, or something like that. So they were like, okay, you're gonna stay. So that was when we let all of our family know to come up and that things were progressing. And that was at about 3.45, four o'clock. Yes. When we kind of told everybody we knew we were staying. And then at that point, contractions were still pretty consistent about four to five minutes apart, and they were pretty painful. So about 5.30, six o'clock, um, I got my epidural, which was amazing. I was <laughs> such a happy camper after I, that. Um, I really wanted to be in the room for the epidural, but it's like a sterile environment, so yeah. I had to leave. Kick them out. So from 6 to about 10, I just kind of labored. 10.20 um, is when the midwife came in and she broke my water. That's when the party got started. At that point, they kept on checking me and I was definitely progressing really well, but they gave me a little tiny, tiny bit of Pitocin just to kind of get the ball rolling a little quicker. So at about 12 o'clock is when we started, midnight was when we started doing like practice pushes. Dang girl, you're chugging it down. It's okay, I'll give it back after. <laughs> she gets so sassy when you take her bottle. So about midnight was when we started doing practice pushes just to see, you know, how things were going. And apparently I had like a lip over my cervix or something like that, so we kind of had to like wait a little bit longer. So I had to hold in the pushes even though I just wanted to push. They were just telling her that she shouldn't push because they needed to do a little fixing down there. Yeah, they had to make sure she could get over the lip. So, she was sitting in the birth canal for quite a while because we started really pushing around like one, maybe a little bit before 1 a.m. And then she was born at 2.24. So uh, I was pushing for about an hour and a half. And it was quite, quite painful. I, like, the whole thing's really just a blur, but I just know they had these lights on me that felt like fireballs from the ceiling. I was just sweating. At some points I felt like I, I wasn't progressing, she wasn't coming out, and I was just, it was a little bit hectic, but um, overall it was really good. In my mind, I had like a totally different picture of how the birth was gonna go, and I, <laughs> I thought I was gonna have to get put in like a, a suit and everything, and there were gonna be a bunch of doctors around her. I do I, think that a lot of that I is like a C-section. Probably, but <laughs> I just had a different picture in my mind. I definitely had a different picture in mind as well. Um, basically, all we had in the room was my grandmother, Anthony, the nurse, and the midwife just popped her head in every now and then. I mean, she wasn't there for the entire thing. I was pushing for an hour and a half with basically the nurse on one side holding one leg and Anthony on the other side holding one leg. And sometimes the nurse even walked out and Anthony was counting my pushes. I mean, it was, it was a little bit, but I mean, it was good. It was fine. I didn't feel I didn't feel overwhelmed. I liked it more. Yeah, I kind of did too. Looking back, it was a little weird. I think just because we weren't expecting it, but it was nice. There wasn't a lot of people in the room. I mean, the TV was on. We were just like hanging out in the room, and I was just pushing until she came out. So after about an hour of Shiloh going through torture with all the pushes and everything, she was like worried that we weren't having any progress. But I could tell with every push that. We were making good progress. I just, I'm sure it just went really slowly for you, huh? Yeah, it definitely was, definitely was torture. Well, while it was happening, but looking back, I mean, it, it was painful, bad. but it was, it was worth it. And the minute, I mean, the minute she was out, it was like, ah, well, an hour and a half of hell for this, I'll take it. Me too. So Addison was born on September 11th at 2.24 a.m. And as soon as she was born, the nurses took her, put her on Shiloh's chest and everything. And she was having like this weird raspy cry. So they had to take her. I wasn't able to hold her or anything like that. They just took her to check her out and said she might have like some fluid in her lungs. At this point, I still had no idea what was going on. Like, I didn't even know there was anything wrong with her, and I hadn't even, like, noticed the fact that she wasn't crying just because I think I was in just such, like... 
I don't even know. From all the pushing for so long, I was just like totally, completely out of it. My mind was completely elsewhere. I was just so amazed by the fact that she was even there. And when they put her on me, I was just like, oh my gosh. And I was just so like out of it that I just Emotional. didn't even, yeah. I was just, I, was, I cried for like 30 minutes and I could like uncontrollable crying for like 30 minutes. I know as soon as I saw what her face looked like and everything, I, I cried. I didn't even see what she looked like because they put her on <laughs> me and then they like took her away and I was like still laying in the hospital bed, you know? And so I didn't even get to see what she looked like or anything until um, when they brought us the picture a few hours later, but. We'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that, <laughs> so. I'd say about 30 minutes went by of the nurses checking her out and what was going on before they told us that she was going to be sent to the NICU and it's a little upsetting but we knew she'd be in really good care and I tried my hardest to stay awake until we all did but that didn't work out so we all just kind of like slept but like half slept because everything was extremely uncomfortable there so we all just kind of half slept um, for a couple of hours by like six or seven AM is when they came in with her first little picture. So this is the picture that we woke up to that they brought us from the NICU. This is the first time we got to see her. When they brought us the picture of her, they told us that she had pneumothorax as soon as she, a pneumo, <laughs> how do I you say, say it? it? What is it? Pneumothorax. Pneumothorax. I've been screwing up that word since day one, but that's what they said that she had um, and basically that was you know when she first came out she took a huge breath or something and there's like a pocket in her lung that popped open or something I don't know the whole gist of it, but they that's said it was going to be yeah Yeah, but they said that it was going to be fine. It would heal itself within one to two days So in my mind I'm thinking great our baby's okay, and she'll be able to come home with us Everything's gonna be fine. She's in good hands good to go, but apparently that wasn't going to happen. We found out within the next few days, or with probably the next day, I think, mm -hmm. that um, they actually thought that she had a respiratory infection and that they would need to keep her for 10 days. So I got early discharge. I left the hospital um, that Saturday in the afternoon and she was staying there. So she stayed at the hospital for 10 days and got all of her treatment and all of her antibiotics and so when she came home, she was healthy as a horse. And beautiful. As always. She looks different every day, that's for sure. But she's cute. She gets cuter every day. Yep. And that was it, right? So, that was our birth story. Thank you everyone for watching. We ended up with this bundle of joy. Say hi. <laughs> hi. <laughs> I'm definitely feeling really, really lucky that everything went the way that it went. Even though they had to keep her for 10 days, everything turned out really well. I mean, overall she was healthy. She just had a little infection and so, you know, we got that taken care of and it was good. But, um, you know, I loved the entire pregnancy. I loved the entire birth, even though it's a little bit of a blur, but it was all really good. And I'm really thankful that we got to have that experience. And I would do it 100,000 more times. I'm thankful as well. All right, you guys, well, thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in our next video. Bye. Bye. Bye.